Welcome back. My name is Chris Miskaitis. I'm an application engineer with Oriental Motor. Um, in this section of the seminar, we'll be discussing um, application requirements for set motors and which solutions are the best. So let's take a look at a couple different application requirements here. I have a list around, uh, around here. Um, first, we're going to be taking a look at high efficiency or long life. So a solution for this would be one of our newer products. It's called a PKE, high torque and high efficiency step motor. So we'll see from this motor, we're going to get about 1.2 to 1.5 times more torque than a standard motor. And we can see that from our curve down here. We'll also get a higher efficiency from this motor. Up to about 40% less power is consumed than a standard step motor. Again, we'll see it, it does vary based on what speed range we're, we're running at, but compared to the conventional model, we'll see that we do get um, a significant amount of uh, power consumption uh, is reduced. So much higher efficiency type motor. We'll also see that because of that, we're going to get lower heat generation. So up to 78% lower temperature rise compared to the standard motor. So we'll see that our conventional model will get us saturated up toward 100 degrees Celsius, where this is only just a little bit above 40 degrees Celsius. So temperature is always going to be um, affecting how long um, a motor can, can run for, also the life of the motor. So if we can keep that motor cooler, we can run it for a longer period of time. So this PKE is meant to be, you know, can be run continuously because the, the temperature on the motor is kept lower. And we'll also see an increase in service life um, due to that cooler temperature. So lower heat generation um, also leads to longer life. Couple other application requirements. What if we're looking for compact size or higher torque? Um, so something that we can look at then is going to be called our PKP type motor. It's a high torque motor, and the reason for that is that it uses rare earth type magnets. They're neodymium iron boron magnets, and those um, are stronger than the standard type magnets in the other motors. So for the same frame size, we're going to be able to get out more torque. So we'll see here, um, when we compare, we get about 50% higher torque comparing the PK244PB to our standard PK244-01B. <clears throat> now both these motors have 1.2 amps per phase. Um, we'll also see that when we compare the PK244PB, the higher torque version, we can compare that to even a larger um, type motor PK245, which would be longer in length, and we still get more torque out. Uh, because we get higher torque, another option is to lower the uh, current. So we can put a 22% lower current level than our standard and get this similar or same amount of torque out of the motor. So we can reduce that to 1 amp instead of the rate of 1.2 amps and get the same torque out as something that's rated for 1.2 amps in that standard motor. This is going to allow you to reduce your uh, current requirement in your power supply. Now that's also going to give you a reduction in your motor temperature. So about 10 percent, uh, I'm sorry, 10 degrees Celsius, you can reduce that motor temperature because of that 1 amp versus 1.2 amps. Now we'll see that a 10 degrees Celsius lower temperature value is going to increase your motor life about two times. Uh, we can also downsize our motor. So if we're taking a look, we get about the same torque out, PK244PA versus a standard motor, PK264-02A. We'll see that when we compare our frame sizes here, we have the same length of motor but the frame size is much smaller, 42 millimeters square instead of the 56.4 millimeters square. And we'll get the same torque out. So get that into a much more compact application. Uh, 
Another application requirement might be low vibration. So what we look at here is we, we've already discussed earlier um, in section one that 0.36 degree per pulse stepping motor. So we'll see with this curve here that because we're rotating such a small degree per pulse, compare that to, to the conventional model, we're going to get much lower vibration, especially at that lower speed range. Right here is going to be that resonance range. So we're going to get on our scale here a maximum of almost 2.0 where our 0.36 degree per pulse stepping motor is much lower, below 0.4. So much lower, uh, much lower vibration from this motor than you would get from a standard step motor. A couple other application requirements, uh, large inertia that you're trying to move, um, also a high torque requirement. We have a motor called our PV series. It's for high inertia applications. So what we do in this case is we increase the rotor diameter. That's going to allow us to move um, larger loads. So we'll see that we're increasing that diameter internally, um, standard, and then this is a uh, this is the PV series. So we normally try and keep our rotor inertia to our load inertia ratio of around 10 to 1 or less for open loop type step motors. So when our rotor here is larger, it's going to allow us to move a larger load, uh, larger inertial load. What about a requirement for low backlash type gears um, or large inertias or higher torque? So what we can look at then is going to be our different gear options. So when we add a gear, we're going to reduce the amount of inertia that we see, we can divide by our gear ratio squared. So if I have a 5 to 1, I can divide by 25 um, and see that much less inertia. We'll see that we have three different types of gears that we're going to offer here. The first is called a taper Hobbs gear. So we'll see that um, the last stages here, here's the output shaft. So let's see the last stage of the gear here, they're tapered and then pushed together a bit so that we have a lower backlash than a standard spur type gear. We'll see the backlash still gets up to about 45 arc minutes, which is about three quarters of a degree. So when you're rotating clockwise and then counterclockwise, you will still see some backlash in this type of gear, uh, but not as much as a standard spur gear, which would be uh, one to two degrees of backlash. Another option here is going to be a planetary gear. We'll see three arc minutes of backlash with this type of gear. Um, the design is a little bit different. We're going to have what's called the sun gear coming from the motor there. It's kind of right in the center. And then around it, we'll have our planets, our planetary type gears that rotate inside the internal gear. So that's going to allow us for much higher efficiency. Um, you can get more torque out, more speed out with this type of gear. And of course, uh, pretty low backlash with three arc minutes. Um, finally, what we're going to take a look at is a hum harmonic gear. It has zero arc minutes of backlash and a little bit different design. It only allows for a 50 to 1 and 100 to 1 ratio, um, but we have something called a flex spline. We'll see it's kind of um, in this oval shape here. And that's going to rotate inside our circular spline. So as this wave generator rotates one complete revolution, we're going to lag behind by two T, and that's how we get our motion out. So because of that design, we get zero arc minutes of backlash um, in that type of gear. Um, another application requirement might be encoder feedback to close the loop. So what we have to offer there, we'll have either 200 or 400 pulse per revolution type encoders, uh, two or three channel. So those will be used with our 1.8 or 0.9 degree type step motors. We'll also have 500 or 1,000 pulse per revolution uh, line driver type encoders. Those could be used with the 0.72 and 0.36 degree step motors uh, to close the loop. And what you'll do is um, every time you input a pulse, the motor is going to move or it should move, and then the encoder has this many lines, either 200, 400, 500, or 1,000 lines on a disk in the back here. 
and we're going to count how many times we pass um, one of those lines. So if anyone has any questions about our step motor lineup, feel free to give us a call at tech support 800-468-3982 or give us an email at techsupport at orientalmotor.com. Thank you for attending.